Well, hi, everybody. My name is Ryan Lane Claus with Esri. I'm excited to be with you today, and thanks to Apple for having us part of this public safety series where we're going to talk about ArcGIS field maps. For those of you who don't know Esri, we are a global leader in geographic information systems, location intelligence, and mapping. We have offices around the world in 67 different countries, and we are focused on bringing the science of geography together with the technology of geographic information systems to give you a framework. The ability to bring in data sets together using location as a common unifying theme, allow you to measure, to visualize and map, to ask questions of the data and discover patterns in that data, to then design programs and plans and security profiles that allow you to make better decisions before we act. You can boil this down into a common phrase that one of our colleagues, Richard Saul Warman, likes to say, which is understanding precedes action. That's really what we do here at Esri, why we're focused on this process or this framework of creating geographic awareness, of geographic knowledge that allows us to better understand the world around us and how things interact with each other. Now, organizations around the world of all sizes and all types use this technology. In fact, billions of maps are being made every day from Fortune 100 companies down to small fire departments and volunteer organizations looking at things like search and rescue. And we invest 30% of our revenue every year back into research and development. This partnership with Apple is an example of that, how we are looking to advance the user experience, the ability to leverage Apple products with Esri technology of ArcGIS to truly drive innovation in public safety. So as we talk public safety, my role here at Esri, we are here to focus on delivering how that framework of GIS, how the technology of ArcGIS allows better understanding of where to focus both preventative and protection measures to mitigate systemic risks that's around us to all threats and all hazards. And ultimately, when something does happen, how do we better derive insights, data-driven insights that allow us to position resources and respond and recover more effectively? Now, we do that through a series of applications, pervasive applications that are increasingly available on the web, dashboards. You've seen these around COVID-19 as examples of taking lots of information together, using geography to unify that data into a single source and then deriving information from that, actionable information from that, looking for patterns and trends and rates, for example, for COVID-19. But that's also then very pervasive in the mobile environment, where we see an increasing request of, from organizations to really engage this geospatial infrastructure, the technology of ArcGIS that's out there to connect agencies, to connect communities, and to connect those that are on the front lines in the field back to the operations centers for better understanding, for better insights and real-time data. Now, as examples of how this is being used around the world, three simple uh, success stories. One, looking at the Zagreb earthquake, looking at mobile devices in the field in the midst of COVID-19 after the earthquake to be able to do a structural assessment, building by building, categorizing the damage, reporting that back in real time into a dashboard able to zoom in and zoom out to get information to see pictures of each structure as the assessment's been occurred. We also then look forward into the Beirut port blast, looking at post-event imagery into a map that allows people to discern what was there previously, what's their post-event, and supporting search and rescue reconnaissance missions, usually using those devices in the field once again to collect information, report that back into the operations center to prioritize search and rescue missions, as well as other resources are being deployed into the community around Beirut. And it's not just those sudden onset disasters or emergencies. It's also about using these tools to plan and manage special events, other tactical activities, in this case, looking at the Tournament of Roses Parade, devices used out there to pre-plan barricades and checkpoints where stands are located and customer access are at. How do we actually put all that together into a map and unify it and then operate from a single source of truth in an operational environment, again, connected in real time to our field staff back to the operations center. So if you think about those three success examples, I would say there are common workflows in this field operations environment. Certainly it's about building the plan, understanding how we can go out and survey buildings and structures and venues, facilities, where we work day in and day out to plan the work in front of us, both in a protective and security measure, but also just in a pre-hazard perspective. It's also then looking at navigation, moving from point A to point B, using the data that we're collecting in real time in a map environment and exploring the map around us. So as we're immersed in that experience in the field, being able to see beyond our purview and look out into the data to start to ask questions of that. 
and then to track and coordinate activities amongst all of our team members together collectively in a map environment on the device that we have in our hand. And then to capture information, whether that's inspections and asset surveys, post-event damage inspections and the like, all of that providing operational awareness together as we kind of move around this cycle continually in all phases and all parts of public safety. And that's why I'm so excited about today. We have a new unified mobile experience that we have been partnering with Apple to design that unifies a lot of applications that we have at Esri to provide both pure mapping experiences, the data collection uh, experience, the location tracking that's needed to provide that collaboration, the work management dispatching capabilities, and even navigation, all into a new application that we call ArcGIS Field Maps. Now, this application, combining all those together, allows you in one unified application to view and mark up maps, to literally draw on the map, to share that in a collaborative way, to capture structured data, to fill out a survey, to fill out a form about a, a fire hydrant inspection all the way to a building inspection or a tactical plan, and to capture photographic evidence and the location at the same time, all appended to that single point in space using that same application. And it also tracks where you've been, where you're going, and well as the team around you. This relies on a lot of the core capabilities of Apple. Now, talking about tracking at a deeper level, this is about sharing your location so that others know where you are in a tactical environment. You also know where everybody else is in this environment and communicate and share information to adjust on the fly based on what you see happening around you in real time. Because this is all part of ArcGIS, we can also start to use that to detect patterns, to look for anomalies, to look for hotspots, the trends, the asking questions in a map-based sense that ArcGIS exposes to you. And all this location, because it's in part of Apple, and part of ArcGIS is your location data, securely your location data. So rather than me just talk about ArcGIS field maps, we'd like to show it to you. So I'd like to invite my colleague Renee Bernstein in to do a demonstration of ArcGIS field maps, and we'll continue from there. Renee, over to you. Thank you, Ryan. As Ryan mentioned, we're going to take a quick look at what field maps is and how to best use it. And we're going to start by launching field maps through our app launcher. This can be found with Arc within ArcGIS Online as well as ArcGIS Enterprise. Field maps allows us to use a web map we have created that has editable layers within it. In this case, I'm using hydrant inspections and I want to build a smart form based on that attribution. Here, we've got two groups, hydrant inspections and inspection failures. When you open the smart form, you're asked two basic questions, hydrant inspected, yes or no, hydrant pass, yes or no. In this case, if answered no, here, this conditional statement has been put into Arcade to say, if no, drop these additional questions down to answer. These are questions that allow us to know why it did not pass inspection. So now that we've taken a quick look at the smart form, let's take a look at what it looks like on our phone. Here, you see I have my Field Maps app open on my iPhone, and we're gonna open it up and jump into our hydrant inspections. If I zoom out, we can see all of our hydrants. Gray shows hydrants that have already been inspected, and red show hydrants that need to be expected. So here, if we take a quick look at a hydrant that needs to be inspected, I can select that one and select the hydrant that shows up in red. I now have seen some of the attribution for that hydrant. By selecting the pencil at the bottom, I'm then given those questions. So in this case, if I'm out in the field and I'm inspecting this hydrant, I can change this from yes, from no to yes, and I can say, has it in past inspection or no? And I can say no in this case and get that second set of questions. Within this group of questions, we can then go through and say which question is the reason why it didn't pass. Now it could be multiple. So is there a tag? Yes. Does it need to be painted? In this case, we're going to say yes. And then we're going to keep going down. Is it too high, too low? Is it obstructed? Is the cap easy to remove? We're going to say no here. 
changes from yes to no. And you may be wondering why are there already information in here? This information within these attributes are based on previous inspections that have been done. So we're using information that's been done in a previous hydrant inspection, and we've loaded it into this feature layer to use within our smart forms. So now I can slide this down and hit submit, and we can now see that this red point is now gray. Now that we've seen this on the phone and seen that we have the ability to go in and edit and take a look at these, what do I do with this information? Well, I want to show you a dashboard. Here, we can see that same layer. And what you'll notice is as I zoomed out, that point we just looked at, which was red, has now changed to gray. So it has now acknowledged the fact, dynamically, that that point has been updated. So now that we're looking at all of our hydrants in this area, we see that there's just over 1,100 that have been inspected and just under 350 that still need to be inspected. We see on the bottom our chart of who has done these inspection as well as who's done it shift-wise. In this case, we have three specific shifts, A, B, and C, as well as a variety of individuals. We can also take a look at this and say, we just want to look at engine seven. We want to see what inspections that they have done. Well, here we can see they have completed all of their inspections. And in shift A, they had 72, B, they had 65, C, they had 60. And we can also take a look just looking at shift C. So if we want to specifically look at shift C, we can see that they still have 83 that are assigned to them that have not been completed. Now this is great information to have, but what do we do with this? This is a dashboard that we may see in a chief's office or in the actual um, fire station itself to see who's out and about and where they are collecting their hydrant inspections. Now this is just one example of how field maps can be used. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Ryan so he can discuss this a little further. Thank you. Well, thank you, Renee. I appreciate that. I mean, that simple workflow of doing a hydrant inspection, think about the massive amount of time that can be saved, deploying people out, monitoring the impact that they're having, positioning them around in different environments, and truly enabling a digital experience on the device that they're used to handling and carrying every day in their pocket. But there's other use cases for this as well. So rather than just look at a hydrant inspection, let's look at a structural assessment, literally moving throughout the community, building by building, and how the same application or just field maps can be used for other workflows. So let's start by looking at our iPhone again. Opening ArcGIS field maps, I'll see that I'm going to launch a new map for building inspections. As I start to pan in on zoom on the map, I'll see other data where collection has occurred already. In this case, we're going to collect a new data point on top of the hospital here. By clicking on the map, you'll notice it captures my GPS location, gives me the accuracy. I can add a point to the map or update, and I'll start filling out the form. In this case, the date and time of the report. Is a building inspection needed? Is there a guard at the front door? Metal detectors? These drop-down values of yes or no are coded in by you, right, to make the data collection entry much more quick for those in the field. In this case, I'm also going to add a note that this is a hospital. Now, in this case, I would take photos of a structure, I would attach other things from my phone or device, and I would submit that. And with that submission comes the location, the data point on the map, as well as all the feature information, the attribution of that feature we just filled out. Now, if we pan and zoom a bit more, you'll see other data points that have been collected by my team. The map is empty and we kind of move back to the next resource and we're on. Now I'm going to opt in to sharing my location. In this case, I could set the tracking duration for a number of hours or until I switch the device off. That's important, right? You own location, you opt in to sharing location. But what does that look like back in the operations center? Well, first let's take a look at the data point we just collected. As we zoom into the operations dashboard, we'll see here's our data point. By clicking that, we retrieve the form that we just filled out. And if we pan over a bit, you'll also see the breadcrumbs, the trails of tracking 
that carry with it all the attribution coming from the Apple device itself. Now, these are breadcrumbs from my team as well as myself in a single operating environment, allowing decision makers to see what's been collected. So I hope that that gives you a full sense of ArcGIS field maps, both the ability to capture data, to use the device that you're familiar with, whether that's an iPad, an iPhone, and even the Apple Watch, to truly capture information, to provide tracking, and to use that in an environment that provides better operational awareness for public safety. Now, because we're in this partnership with Apple, there are iOS-specific features of these applications that are exciting for us. One is that you can sign in with your Apple ID, a unified logging experience. It also supports features like dark mode. So in public safety, working at night and operational environments, you have better visibility on the device itself to continue the work that you're doing every day. It also supports things like split view on the iPad. Think about data collection and being able to look at two forms side by side or two features side by side, comparing things together and using the real estate and the screen that you're providing an iPad experience to truly immerse yourself in that environment. Also supporting Scribble on the iPad, some amazing new ways to literally capture, as you see in the bottom left, your handwriting into the form, into the feature, into the map in real time. And things like Apple Watch for support location tracking, where I can enable tracking, set the duration of time, and be on my way collecting data as I travel throughout the, the environment that we're in every day. So I appreciate the time again. I want to say thanks to Apple for having us. I hope that this has given you a deeper insight to ArcGIS Field Maps, this new unified map experience that supports all of public safety, the ability to plan your routes, to navigate, to understand the world around us in a map-based context, to capture information and intelligence and monitor all of our activity in a single platform that allows us to coordinate everything that we do in a better way. Thanks for having us today. I sure appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you again.